Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. Fans taking $218 and paying Niger measly $11. Yes, that's what the Wagner chief said in an interview. He said the military junta in Niger told him this when they invited them to come and help them secure their country. He said that they deserve a better deal. That any company coming into their country to mine natural resources should at least offer them a 50-50 deal. It's not clear where they're getting this $218 from because when you get online, the price of uranium hovers around $56. And it actually hit this price after the military coup in Niger. But the most important thing here is to understand their sentiments. These people are fighting for emancipation. They feel that they are being cheated. Why is their country too poor upon all the natural resources that companies, especially Western countries, are mining from their country. They are simply tired. The same sentiment can be seen in all the countries in West Africa where the military have recently taken over power. They are all simply tired. Whether it's the fault of the companies mining these resources or the different democratically elected governments the military took over power from who failed to deliver dividends of democracy. Yes, that's the major problem here. When governments fail to deliver good governance, they fail to lift their people out of poverty. The people will always fight back. That fight back might be in the form of a military coup, civil disobedience, or even a revolution. That's why you see people chanting and dancing in the streets of Mali, Niger, Burkina. They are simply tired and they truly believe that the military guys will help them to achieve economic emancipation. So why will Nigeria and fellow ECOWAS countries stand in their way and prevent them from achieving economic emancipation? That's not how you treat a brother, an ally, or a neighboring country. You don't threaten a military man and expect him to cower. He will first of all put up a fight, and if he sees that he's losing the war, he will now surrender. Yes, that's what they've realized. After threatening to invade Niger, after seven days, ECOWAS have now realized that it was counterproductive. That's why they now say that they prefer diplomacy and negotiations, which of course should have been the first thing they should have done. But after threatening and later sending an envoy to Chiani in Niger, he gave them a cold shoulder. He didn't even show up. So they now realize their mistake. And it's obvious they can't be doing this in the interest of Nigerians. When Nigerians are not complaining, they are happy, celebrating everywhere, dancing in the streets. You know, they are backing the military. So why should a foreigner be complaining more than they believed? Meanwhile, Tinubu has made a request from Nigeria's National Assembly to authorize a military intervention in Niger. This is already receiving serious opposition from his fellow party members who are from the north. The senators from the northern states are saying that they oppose it, that they don't want a military intervention in Niger. So it's obvious that they will not authorize him to go into Niger for any adventure. Let Nigerians solve their problems by themselves. They are not asking anyone to come to their aid for now. They are not even opposing the military guys. If in the future they start doing that, then a military intervention can be justified. But like they say, a stitch in time saves nine. Prevention is better than cure. Why don't we tackle the root causes of military coup? 
Why don't we expend the same energy in criticizing election rigging and political coup and tenure extension, even human rights abuse and stifling of opposition? Why don't we criticize them with the same energy? Why wait till a coup happens? <laughs> Look at Alassane Ouattara, the president of Côte d'Ivoire. When he was fighting Laurent Babo, the former president, everyone saw him as a Democrat. But look at what he has become. After spending two terms in office of five years each, he forced an amendment of their constitution so that he can have a third term. So why should people who don't obey the rules in a democracy criticize others? Because they feel it is a military coup. You can't change the rules in the middle of the game. That's exactly what INEC did. After telling the whole world how they will conduct the election, in the middle of the election, they changed the rules and rigged the election in favor of Tinubu. He didn't win the election. He doesn't have the mandate of the people. And he is the one talking about protecting democracy. <laughs> is this a joke? You don't know what democracy means. You violated all democratic rules in order to get to power. You used thugs policemen, anything within your power and money to get to power and you have the audacity to tell another man to restore democracy in his own country, this is a joke taken too far. The military guys are in charge in Niger no matter what anyone feels. That's why the attitude of France reinforces their sentiments. You can't say you don't recognize them because they told you to pack and leave, leave their country with your military that they don't want you anymore. How can France be saying they don't recognize them, that they are not the legitimate power in Niger? What does legitimacy mean when they quickly rushed to congratulate someone in Nigeria who didn't win an election, despite the damning EU report that says that the election was seriously flawed? So no matter how anyone feels about it, the military guys are in charge in Niger. If you want to conduct any business in Niger today, you meet them, you deal with them. They are the official government in Niger. They are only against him because they can't control Niger anymore. That's why they don't ever criticize civilian dictators who rig elections continuously for decades to stay in power. Look at Paul Bia in Cameroon. Look at what is going on in Senegal today. And in so many other African countries where you have civilian dictators, they hide under democracy to steal their country blind and launder the money to Western countries where it is used to develop their economies. They will never criticize them. They only criticize military men because they can't control them. It's as simple as that. Look at Nigeria in the 90s. Nigeria was under serious sanctions under Abacha. They couldn't control Abacha. Even the Pope came to beg Abacha to leave power, but he refused. Not that forceful takeover of power or military coup is good. It is cause and effect. Let's not forget that. If we tackle all the causes of military coup, there will never be a military coup in Africa or other parts of the other parts of the world. Most of these Western powers, what they encourage us to tolerate in Africa, they can't even tolerate a quarter of that in their own country. Can Emmanuel Macron amend the French constitution to get a third term after his second term finishes? He wouldn't try it even in his dream, because his fellow party members will make sure it fails. And he might even go to jail, but they come to Africa, they tolerate it. That is double standards. If they truly want to support the growth of democracy in Africa, why not be strict about it? Why not insist that all the rules must be obeyed? And in a case where it is not obeyed, do not recognize the government. That's the only way to teach them that, yes, you can't go anywhere with this. We will see you as a military person that forcefully took over power. Yes, but they whine with them, dine with them, despite their corruption. When, when a military coup happens, they come out to criticize. No, this is double standards taken too far. The people of Niger will solve their problems by themselves. If the military junta decides to set up a transition to civil rule committee to quickly conduct a fresh election and get back to democracy, then it will work for them. They already have a bright future with investments in their natural resources, like the crude oil pipeline from Agadez in Niger to Cotonou in Benin Republic. Whenever they return to civil rule, the politicians must learn their lesson. That's the problem. They never learn their lesson. Look at Nigeria, for instance. What politicians have done in the Fourth Republic is not even up to what politicians did in the Third Republic that invited the military. They haven't learned any lesson. Look at this one, appointing 70 ministers. 70! Highest since Nigeria's history. 
What will they all be doing as ministers? They will all be driving in convoys, wasting money on fuel, wasting estacles, wasting all sorts of resources. At a time they are supposed to run a very lean government to reduce the cost of governance, they are wasting the resources and they turn around and tell you to wait that good times will come in the future. When they are busy wasting the one of the present, they are wasting money of the present that are telling you to wait for tomorrow. They don't give anything in return, but they expect citizens to die for the country. Patriotism means a different thing to them. This is coming at a time when the cost of fuel has tripled. So you can imagine the increased cost in the many ministries, in the presidency, the national assembly, and many state governments. These politicians only know how to spend money. They never know how to make money in the first place. They can't generate any money for the country. They only know how to tax people. So these are what Western powers and even ECOWAS should be criticizing now that it has not gotten out of hand. Even in the United States, Biden will never appoint 70 ministers. Will Macron do that or will they do it in any Western country to appoint 70 ministers? Are we even talking about rule of law? They don't obey court orders. Will Macron do that? Will Biden disobey a court order? He will never try that. Even the former president Trump is facing many trials as we speak. So why don't they criticize them and tell them, no, do this this way, do this that way. If not, we sanction you and court aid. That way, they might start doing the right thing because they already know that they don't have the support of their people. If they lose the support of the international community, they will now understand that they are alone. They have nowhere to run to in case of crisis. They will be forced to do the right thing. Yes, this happened to Mobutu Sese Seko. All the impunity and everything he did in his country. He had the backing of France. That was where he eventually ran to. If an African leader knows that no Western country will grant him passage in the event of a crisis, he will not do things that will put his country into crisis in the first place. He will obey all the rules of democracy to make sure there is peace. So the Western countries are actually part of the problem. They are the ones backing dictators in civilian garb. Without their backing, these people will understand that they have nowhere to run to. And in case of a revolution, they will be the first casualty. They won't have anywhere to run to. Gentlemen, good day my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, anointed lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live, on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, good day my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, anointed lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up 
many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.